our life really changed at that point. It was devastating. He would just look away from me. Every, every, he would just be all over the place. His eyes would, would be all over the place. We don't have a medical test right now that tells us whether a child has autism or not. The public school wasn't going to be an option. Just because you're autistic, it doesn't mean that, that you can't find a job. We have a saying, if you've met one person with autism, you've met one person with autism because everyone is so different. Welcome to Autism, Life on the Spectrum. I'm Dari Alexander. Over the next 30 minutes, we hope to shed light on the developmental disorder and educate you on some of the challenges facing so many families today. So we begin by asking, what is autism? Na, 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 na. A typical Saturday morning for many kids. You know, music class, Bye. swimming lessons, yoga, or just playing in a sandbox. But for these children, this is more than just a fun physical outlet. It's a chance to develop practical skills and socialize. You see, these children have autism spectrum disorders. Jackie Cianzo, the founder of SNAC, a special needs activity center for adults and kids, and mother of a son with autism, understands exactly what these kids are going through. The biggest deficit with autism, with, which is what he has, is this lack of um, social interest and social interaction, other than me, <laughs> he likes me. Autism refers to a range of conditions characterized by challenges with social skills, repetitive behaviors, speech and nonverbal communication, as well as by unique strengths and differences. Dr. Thomas Frazier is the chief science officer of Autism Speaks. We have a saying, if you've met one person with autism, you've met one person with autism because everyone is so different. Some people are much more affected, some people less affected. And so the word spectrum is really designed to help people to understand that there's this wide variation in behavior and challenges and also in strengths that people have. Dr. Frazier says there is more than just one cause of autism. We know that there are multiple different genes, for example, that are involved in different subgroups of individuals. Children with autism can be diagnosed as young as 18 months old, but the most obvious signs, lack of eye contact and verbal communication, tend to appear between two and three years old. Autism affects children of all socioeconomic and ethnic backgrounds. I thought of autism as something that um, little boys get who don't make eye contact, aren't affectionate, and like trains. Meet five-year-old Indigo. She was diagnosed at two years old, and ever since, her parents, Paul and Star Khan, have structured their entire lives around giving Indigo the support she needs. Our life really changed at that point. It went from, you know, raising this sort of typically developing little, you know, baby to, okay, this is, you know, she's going to be working really hard on this intense you know, this intense program. Indigo has attended physical therapy, occupational therapy, speech therapy, and applied behavioral analysis, just like 11-year-old William Hamilton. His father is a member of New York's finest. He says that when his son turned two, he and his wife knew that something wasn't quite right. I would try to engage him, try to talk to him, try to get him to, to laugh or, or tickle him, and, and he would just look away from me. Every, every, he would just be all over the place. His eyes would, would be all over the place. He wouldn't, he, he couldn't focus. These days, he says William is a happy developing child. Just like these kids, who are all focusing on being more comfortable with themselves and waiting for us to better understand them. Getting a diagnosis is a frightening, trying and confusing time for parents. So how are children diagnosed with autism? Linda Schmidt with One Family's Journey. <laughs> hello, hello, RJ. Hi. Thank you so much. Our three-year-old RJ Garofalo has autism and is nonverbal. RJ, can you come sit in your chair? We're gonna play. Yeah. Bye, lion. Bye, panda. Bye, elephant. When his mom recalls the day he was diagnosed, it brings tears to her eyes. Devastating. It was devastating. <gasps> like most parents whose children have autism, Angela and Joe saw signs in their little boy before his first birthday. He's not talking. He's not responding. Um, he doesn't 
hear loud noises. He's not listening to my voice. We run the different doctors, so a pediatrician won't give you that diagnosis. Um, but they'll say, they'll refer to you to a neurologist or, um, or a hearing specialist. The process can take six months or longer and can be confusing and overwhelming. We don't have a medical test right now that tells us whether a child has autism or not. There isn't a blood test or a brain scan. Dr. Katherine Lord specializes in autism with New York Presbyterian Hospital's Center for Autism and the Developing Brain in White Plains. Observing them as a family today, what is this telling you? How is this helping you? I think it gives me a sense of how they're interacting and how, for example, Angela's been able to use some of the things that we've taught her. One of the reasons she's sitting on the floor is to be able to be at the same level in terms of eye contact. Dr. Lord says early intervention is critical and for RJ, his progress over the past year has yes. been dramatic. When you look back at family videos of a year ago, you're looking at two different children. One, one child was kind of staring off right through you and didn't really interact. And that same child today is laughing and playing and communicating. <laughs> Ready, <laughs> set, <laughs> go! So autism is different in every person who has it. That makes finding the cause of autism and research that much more difficult. Dan Bowens explores the medical advances being made right now in therapies and treatments. Eight, seven, Carefully counting down to launch. Three, two, one. It's a significant sign of progress for Odin Connolly. Can you count to three? He has autism, six and a half years old, with what's described as emerging verbal skills. When a neurotypical person walks into a room and um, there are a bunch of people, they say hello, and people say hello back. Odin doesn't do that. Autism is a complex disorder that often has no clear cause. It's why Tim and Serena wanted to find out as much as they could. Right before he started uh, nursery school for autistic children, we had him do a whole gamut of evaluations. Research not available decades ago, like this study called a VB map, a detailed analysis of verbal behavior. We hadn't really realized or we hadn't completely come to terms with what autism was in his case because it's different for every kid and how it was affecting him specifically. I would say we've made huge advances in understanding how to help these kids. One exciting research development says Dr. Jeremy Veenstra Vanderweel, a child psychiatrist with Columbia University Department of Psychiatry, new studies into oxytocin, a naturally occurring hormone in the body. Oxytocin changes social behavior, changes attention to a face, changes your desire to be near another person or interact with another person. And that may be powerful for some kids with autism spectrum disorder. But there is no one type of autism, so he says there is likely no one solution. When you talk about a cure, that's a tricky situation. I usually don't think in terms of a cure. Kids with autism keep developing. Maybe in the general population, you've got a curve that looks like this. In the child with autism, maybe their curve looks like this. If we could tilt that a little bit, it gives the child opportunities they wouldn't otherwise have. Press this one, Odie. Odin's parents say detailed studies like this have helped guide therapy, making an immediate impact. Small steps on the long road ahead. When we come back, fighting for services. They've made it so tough on the parents they want them to fold. Getting the right therapies is stressful and expensive. We've been out anywhere between 150,000 or north of that. The lifelong battles many families are forced to face. Then, gone without a trace. The simple technology protecting autistic kids from wandering away from home. When Autism Life on the Spectrum returns. Welcome back. Getting the right services can make all the difference in helping people with autism. But as Sharon Crowley shows us, gaining access to appropriate schools and therapies isn't always easy. Read the, the words. It's a cold word. 18 year old Christopher Campagna goes to the Forum School in Waldwick, New Jersey. It's a private, non profit school serving children with autism and related learning challenges. His journey to get here was long 
and expensive. We address each child's needs individually and work on the skills and deficits that they have. Principal Brian Detlefson was here when Christopher first started. A student like Christopher that when he came had minimal words and minimal social interaction that's now greeting me at the front door when he walks in the morning and saying, hi Brian, you know, how you doing? It, it's just rewarding on, on so many different levels. One stick of butter. Okay, get the butter. Christopher's parents learned he had autism when he was just two years old. Oh, it was, it was tar, you know, just devastating. And you hear this autism word of which it's more of a label than a diagnosis because they don't really know what causes it. After Jack comes the, what's his mo mother's queen. name? Queen. His diagnosis made getting Christopher the right education even more important to his parents. He needs the greatest chance of independence in adulthood. When it was time to start kindergarten, the New York City Department of Education placed Christopher in a public school. The public school wasn't going to be an option. I found Christopher good job. He needed more experienced teachers. He needed the right classroom setting. Whitey. 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 The dog's name is Whitey. It's why Christopher's parents turned to attorney Gary Mayerson for help. His firm specializes in helping individuals with autism who are not getting the support they need in a public school. They may need speech therapy, ABA therapy, physical therapy. Because of that demand for services and because of the cost of that, the school districts will often resist the, the payment of that and that, will, that precipitates the lawsuits. Under federal law, parents are allowed to sue the public school district to reimburse them for the cost of a private school tuition, especially if they can prove their child is not getting what he or she needs in a public school. And the parents of special needs just got a victory in the U.S. Supreme Court. The high court ruled that every school district across the country must provide a meaningful educational experience for every child. Christopher's parents did sue the New York City Department of Education, not just once, but every year for the last 13 years, sometimes getting the full tuition reimbursement, sometimes getting just a portion. It's a constant cash flow issue. We've been out anywhere between 150000 or north of that at one time, between having to lay out multiple years and waiting for reimbursement. They've made it so tough on the parents in recent years, they want them to fold. No one ever wants to give up on your child. It's almost like the, it's standing up to the bully. You have to stand up for your kid, and if you don't stand up, there's no one there who's gonna stand up. Coming up, lost, alone, and unable to communicate. Alex was nowhere to be found. The steps some families are taking to prevent their child from wandering. And later, one young man's inspirational story of breaking barriers and joining the workforce when autism, life on the spectrum, comes right back. Half of all children on the spectrum wander, a frightening reality facing many families. Wandering by children with autism is common, dangerous, and puts tremendous stress on families. Zachary Keish with some of the resources available to keep children safe. Ten-year-old Alex Millman is a great kid. He loves his dog, his iPad, and occasionally he loves to wander. Alex elopes. He doesn't understand the dangers of just getting up and walking away. Alex's friend is a service dog meant to prevent wandering, but Alex is also part of a special program called Project Lifesaver. This is his monitor. It's part of a collaborative effort between Westchester County, County Police, and Westchester Jewish Community Services. Westchester County happens to be one of the few areas in the country that's currently providing this service to families. When you're a family affected by autism, you have many, many priorities, but I would say safety is a main uh, priority. About half of children with autism wander and being lost or missing is often compounded by other characteristics. Challenges with communication, challenges with social interactions, uh, repetitive behaviors that when really misunderstood can lead to dangerous situations. Most families have a safety plan and when that fails we rely on the community and first responders to find loved ones. We program in their individual transmitter number and then we can track it using this receiver. This is Amory Bernhardt, sergeant with the Westchester County Police Department. He's been coordinating and training officers here since 2010. He says more than a dozen people have been found using the technology. The back door was wide open and Alex was nowhere to be found. I just started hysterically crying um, and I remember I just I ran out of the house. I 
shut the door, completely forgetting that my, you know, my other brother was in the house. Um, and I just ran down the street and found him. The bracelet is there um, in the event that he thwarts all of our other safety measures, that we would be able to find him and bring him home safely. Still ahead, transitioning to adulthood. I know that I want Joseph to be as independent as he can. I want him to enjoy life and not feel that he's limited. How people with autism are entering the workforce and getting the help they need to make that move. Growing up, leaving high school, and getting a job, they're all exciting milestones in a person's life. But what happens when a person with autism finishes school? What does the future hold for them? Erica Wachter finds out. How proud are you of yourself? Very proud. Yes, I am. At 21 years old, young adults on the autism spectrum like Joseph Ortiz age out of the school system. The next step in their lives is an unknown landscape. Educators call it falling off the cliff. The question that comes into play is, um, what happens next when someone turns 21 and a day? What kinds of supports and services or opportunities are going to be available to them? With an unprecedented number of young adults with ASD entering adulthood each year, there is now a greater awareness about the vast need for services for these individuals. A main goal of these transition programs is fostering independence. We're trying to allow students with disabilities um, more autonomy, more control over the decisions in their lives. Clinical professor of adolescent special education, Dr. Gina Riley, works one-on-one -on -one with young adults on the spectrum through the supported decision-making project at Hunter College. The state grant program in its first year is an alternative to court-appointed guardianship. It's more empowerment for them to really make and create their own life and their own decisions. That empowerment is crucial, especially when it comes to finding employment. As of 2015, by age 25, only 55% of those with autism spectrum disorder have paying jobs. It's the lowest of any disability. So many of us define who we are by what we do. Why would we think that the individuals that we're talking about today wouldn't think any differently of that? In 2011, Birch Family Services launched its new Frontier program to help meet the needs of this growing population. The program focuses on four key areas, employment, social, health, and living. A lot of what we do around transition planning is really looking at what people's interests are, looking at what people's strengths are. Just because you're autistic, it doesn't mean that that you can't find a job. Just keep searching until you find one and don't give up. While Joseph held on to this mindset, the harsh reality impacted his mother, Mary. When he graduated high school in 2011, she was worried an independent future may not be possible. I was scared, I was. And talking to parents and realizing what their child who graduated before Joseph was going through, there was nothing there for for them. And there is often little education to ease those fears. Adult services are not guaranteed. Receiving help is largely dependent on funding and also self-advocacy. I want Joseph to be as independent as he can. I want him to enjoy life and not feel that he's limited. 144 size. Since January of 2013, Joseph has been working for The Modern, a restaurant at the Museum of Modern Art, a job he secured after working with a job coach at Birch. I've seen him grow so much within his role where he doesn't really need my direction anymore and he's developed such a sense of I have to do this or I have to you know, help my supervisor out because he asked me to do something. Not only it was a good job for me, but also the people there are nice at the same time. Yeah. It's everything you could possibly imagine. Nice. <laughs> and for his Very new nice. family, his work team, the feeling is mutual. Joseph, a prime example of the importance of inclusion and the difference hiring someone on the spectrum can make in the workplace. Instead of saying, oh, they have autism, saying what kind of skills can they bring to our team, um, like Joseph has, and not looking at them for having autism, but looking at them for the very special skills and personalities that they have. Give me a hug, give me a hug. I am forever grateful for Joseph having that opportunity, being given that chance where I saw him excel. I mean, I saw him 
reach his goals. He wanted a job. He's very friendly. He likes talking to people. He's at a place. I, it's a blessing. Living life on the spectrum doesn't mean you're invisible. It just means you want to be heard and understood. We hope the last 30 minutes has shed some light on a disorder that sometimes goes without a voice. Until next time, I'm Jerry Alexander.